Hello everyone, I'm Bruno and today I'm here with someone who used to be on that side, behind the camera. But... Hello everyone, my name is Rui, I'm quite excited to be on this side of the camera today. And we're here to talk about our trip to Montenegro. If you haven't been, well, with us for so long, you should know that we've created a travel account on Instagram, it's called our underscore parallel underscore universe underscore, but the actual project is called our parallel universe and we are waiting for you there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our parallel universe. So yeah, make sure you follow us there. And the reason why we're here today is because we wanted to go through the trip with you and to go through the highs and lows and I don't know, more of a personal experience. This is not scripted. We've got a few lights on for it to look good, but that's all. We haven't planned anything. We're just gonna be here talking and sharing our experience with you. First things first, um, we decided to go to Montenegro purely because we didn't know anything about the country. We didn't know anyone from there, which is quite uncommon for us because in London, we meet people from everywhere in the world, really. Um, so we decided to go there, explore a new country, a new culture. So it was quite funny. Yeah, um, I didn't even know where it was like on the map. Yeah, you I, never do. Actually, <laughs> I'm the person who thought that Budapest was a country. Yeah. Yeah. This, this was our little secret. So we're sharing this with you. Please don't tell anyone. <laughs> and I'm so. always the one that teaches Bruno about geography. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell that I'm the one always planning our trips as well. And I'm the one editing the content, so come on. Yeah, fair. <laughs> so yeah, that's the reason why we decided to go to Montenegro. Our initial plan was to visit Croatia, mm -hmm. and we just found these tickets to Montenegro for £12 um, each was it way. 12? Yeah, Ooh. £12 each way. Um, so we just thought, why not? Discovering something that we never heard about. Um, and we found it quite funny and enjoyable to be, to be fair. And we can start by telling them one of our main problems, of course. which was taking our drone with us because we didn't know. So we bought drone before that. Uh, it has got less than 250 grams so that it's easier to travel around with it. And we found out that you would need some sort of, um, what do you call it? Like you need like a permit to take it with you. It. So we applied basically for the civil aviation organization for their approval for us to take the drone with us. Um, and that document was granted to us, but we still need to ask permission from the Ministry of Economy as well to import the drone to Montenegro. Um, and that's a bit complicated to be fair. Um, we needed to submit some documents. We needed to pay a fee, but these documents, they needed to be filled in Montenegrin language, which we cannot speak <laughs> so far who knows in the future but yeah and we we tried to have some support from them but at some point they stopped replying to our emails which is quite unprofessional in our opinion um i sent more than 10 emails asking the same question without any response so in the end um we didn't take our drone with us um we were quite sad because we had so many plans to record in specific locations and specific ideas for our videos as well that we couldn't um, perform. We, we managed in the end to record good stuff. You can watch it somewhere here, um, but it, it's not like as cinematic as we would love to. Well, yeah, it was fine. The reason why we're sharing this with you is because maybe you're traveling from one country to another without coming home. So let's say you're going to Cyprus, which allows drones and everything you want, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you're going from Cyprus to Montenegro, you can use the drone in Cyprus, but you can't take it with you to Montenegro. So how do you bring it back home then? So that's why it is important for you to plan this beforehand. You can still take your drone with you, but if you don't have these documents, you will probably need to pay a fee at the airport and again confiscate your drone there. Yeah, and, and we don't want that. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. But not all was bad, so there were good things about it. One of the first things we ask the locals about is the safety of the country if there's anything in particular that we should be aware of and the first thing they told us is that the crime rate in montenegro is quite low and we shouldn't have a problem and how can we tell the country's safe because we were driving peacefully and you would see uh, cars parked in the middle of the streets in the middle of a lane like an actual lane 
with their doors open, with their, win with their windows open. No one was inside and they were just there. They were just left there. Relaxing. You would go, yeah. <laughs> but people would go shopping and they would leave their cars open. And so yeah, we, we figured the country would be quite safe, judging. By yeah, that. and actually we never felt unsafe. We explored a lot of different cities, a lot of different places and everywhere we felt the same. So I, I think that generally the country is quite safe. And what actually allowed us to visit the whole country and very easily with no difficulties whatsoever was the fact that we rented a car. So yeah, so we rented the car for seven days. We paid 200 for the car plus 65 pounds, I believe. Pounds, euros? I actually don't remember, but maybe euros because euros is a currency in Montenegro. Yeah. Um, for insurance for the total of seven days, um, and actually I think is the best option because the country is quite small so you can easily drive between cities you can explore the rural part of the country which is quite nice as well um, but at the same time be careful because the drivers are not very careful there uh, we had a couple of experiences where we felt <laughs> we were gonna um, die at some point yeah yeah absolutely because if people like us foreigners were abiding by the rules so, and they're not so patient with us. So they overtake you from the right, from the left. They don't care. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it was a good experience anyway. In the end, we didn't have an accident, <laughs> which is positive. Um, we didn't have any problem with the rental um, agency either. They were quite professional and friendly. They yeah, even yeah, yeah. subscribed to our channel. True, because uh, <laughs> I asked who he was taking care of it. As always, he takes care of all the bureaucracy. And I asked the guy, oh, do you mind if I film? Because we've got a YouTube channel and that would be nice if we could share your company. And he was like, uh, yeah, sure. And he was quite taken aback at that time. But then five minutes later, he was like, oh, I'm sorry for my reaction, but I was not expecting you to say that. Can I follow? Please say good things about us, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, he was very nice. He subscribed the channel right away. So, <laughs> so please be like this guy and just subscribe the channel now. <laughs> See, he's new here, but he knows how to do it. I know the trick, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. But yeah, but if, if you have the chance and it's within your budget, just consider the option of renting a car. It will be much easier. And in the end, even though it's quite expensive, it's say you will save a lot of money mm -hmm. because otherwise to visit all those places, you will need to book a tour, for example, with a company. And in the end, I think it will be probably more expensive. Yeah, which is feasible still. But I would say it's quite dangerous actually, because their streets are too narrow. You would have to go on a bus like up to the mountains and it's, it's crazy. I don't think I would. Did we see any sort of public transportation? Yeah, so I think from what I read, they have quite a good bus transportation um, service. I can't remember seeing any bus. Like no, we saw, we saw a few, yeah. And they were quite full, so I assume a lot of people use them. Um, but for us, if we have the chance, we will always rent a car because it yeah. just gives a, a bit more um, freedom in that sense. And we like to wake up really early so that we can take those pictures. And this is a good tip for you. If, you're, if you want to be some sort of travel influencer or just if you want to have good pictures, you know that touristic places have loads of people at some point. So if you want to get those nice shots, just go very early in the morning uh, by the sunrise and you'll usually find it. Absolutely. Empty. So renting a car, a plus. Yeah, and it was with surprise, surprise, surprise yeah. rentals. Yeah, but um, we we can probably leave their account or website yeah, yeah, we'll in the description. Do. We will do. I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes care of that. The bureaucracy. I take care of this. The beautiful part. Of it. So I think the next next important thing that we need to speak of is the accommodation in Montenegro. Mm -hmm. Bruno is very sensible to, <laughs> to this topic. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to find good prices, but accommodation in Montenegro is not that cheap. And it's due to the fact that the country is becoming more and more popular nowadays, yeah. especially during summer. Um, so we divided our stay between three cities. We stayed the first night in the capital, then we moved to Budva for three nights. And lastly, we stayed two nights in Kotor, which for us was the best city, but we will get there shortly. <laughs> um, so the first one and the second as well in Budva, they were really nice. They were very clean, very modern, like the, the people there were absolutely fantastic. We they... felt the same way we felt in Cyprus. Yeah, like they treat exactly. you like family. They don't know you but they, and sometimes they don't know how to speak English that well. They treat you like family. They want to make you feel good. And, and, and they will do everything to help you and to make you feel welcomed. Um, the first lady, for example, she met, met us in the middle of the road because we couldn't find the apartment. She took us inside. She stayed a while with us and explained a few bits about the apartment. And we were meant to pay in cash and we forgot. 
Um, so we, we told her, oh, I'm sorry, we forgot, blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh, it's fine. Just leave the money there and leave it there before you leave tomorrow. And yeah, I trust you. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what do you right? mean? <laughs> Why do you trust us? You don't know us. Please don't, we're dangerous. And I'm, no. I'm usually that person that trusts everyone, but I'm not sure I would trust my house to a stranger without knowing if they would pay. So we, you can we could see, have just left. Yeah, exactly. So you can see how, you know, locals behave and how welcoming they are yeah. just by that action. Indeed. Um, then the second one, as I was mentioning, was really good. It was really clean. We had a swimming pool. Um, you will be able to see it in our vlog anyway, but for us, it was the, the, our favorite. Yeah. Everything was just perfect. Even the guests, the ambience was, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it was really good. Um, and the location was quite good. It was close to the city center, to the old town as well, but not that crowded. And it was quite easy to, to get there, even though it was in a hill. Um, so very narrow streets, but in the end, um, it was quite good. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. And then the very last one, I was not so happy. Well, we <laughs> were not so happy about it. I'll let Bruno explain why. So, <clears throat> we told me we would go to Kotor, right? Yeah. Uh, to end our trip, it was for two or three nights, something like that. Two nights. Two yeah. nights, yeah. And we would have sea view. So we got there. It was raining, cats and dogs. But <laughs> anyway, it was just by the river in front of us. We had huge mountains, and the view was amazing. Uh, it took one hour for the room to be ready because she said oh the other guests have just left if you could wait for a bit we're cleaning but we're like okay no problem the lady couldn't speak english um so yeah I i'm assuming it was her son don't know Probably. someone she knew uh someone who lived there he would speak with the guests in, in more fluent english and then she took us to our bedroom and we were like oh where's the sea view it was more of a car park view i can leave you with a picture here um it was a car park view we had no internet whatsoever and we were like how can we work we don't have mobile data we we can't work on the internet outside so how can we produce content and then post them for you we can't so we tried on the computer it wasn't working we told her she said oh uh sorry and she called someone and they sort of rebooted the system it didn't work and then we found bugs the smell was horrible, horrible. It was like something wet it was like i can't something just... rotten like yeah, 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 bed, yeah. as if it had been raining there for years and no one cleaned it something like that yeah the only good thing was the mattress it was quite comfortable it was just like the internet problem the smell the cleaning cleaning the cleaning <laughs> clean cleanliness cleanly it was a cleanly cleanly anyway you can see that ah. which is not our native language <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the apartment was not that clean, to be fair. We can leave you with some photos as well. Um, and that, yeah, I think the major thing for us was that we booked a sea view apartment because we would like to, you know, have that experience, take some nice photos there, but we could only see the car park and the sea, just this little bit. Yeah. So and I said by the river a while ago, by the sea. I think I said it is the a sea. <laughs> it is the sea, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was not a good experience at all. Um, and just for, sorry, they kept saying, okay, we're going to sort it out, we're going to sort it out. And they sort of kept postponing it till the day we left. So we left without the problems having been sorted out. Yeah. So, and then we, we lost a um, bit of time checking the reviews. And the most recent reviews on booking.com, right? Yeah. Um, which was the platform we used to book everything. Yeah. Uh, were quite good. But then if you scroll down for a bit, you realize that Loads of people had the same problem we had. So we should have seen that, yes. But still, it had a score of four... I think it was 8.8 .8 and four stars. And That's... to be fair, I don't know how it's possible for that to have four star quality review. Um, but at the same time, we tried to, to be positive anyway and tried to enjoy because it could just, you know, mess up with our mindset for the rest of the trip. And the lady was very kind. Yeah, that's true. She was trying her best to try to help us even though she could not communicate with us. The location of the apartment was really good, was very close to Kotor Old Town, uh, but in the other side of the sea. Which was so, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Not that crowded, easier to park as well. So in the end, there was some positive side, I mean, positive points as well about this accumulation. Yeah. So um, it was enjoyable in the end. But we would <laughs> rather we had stayed in Budva. Anyway. So, anyway, Bruno was mentioning earlier that we didn't have any mobile data. Mm -hmm. 
and that's purely because our plan here in the UK doesn't include Montenegro in their Europe zone. If you stay online for half an hour, then you would pay 15 euros. Which is which is ridiculous nowadays. And the, the plan we use, um, the network we use is Voxy. Yeah. Which is similar like to Vodafone in Portugal. And I, I think it's by Vodafone. I think it's yeah. by Vodafone, yeah. It's a smaller yeah. company owned by Vodafone. And before the 20th of May, I reckon, you could still travel throughout Europe and have the normal roaming. Yeah. Uh, but after that, you would need to pay, blah, blah, and we were fine because we thought, okay, there's a... Because they said you can pay one pound per day and have like your normal plan, something like that. Yeah. But then we noticed Montenegro was not on the list, as he said, so it was pointless. And it was good because we did some sort of social media detox. detox yeah. It was amazing because <laughs> we would leave the house and with the, with the phones on our backpacks and I would forget I had a phone because I was holding the camera and I don't know. It was yeah. an amazing feeling. No notifications, no... Yeah. And for those who know me, um, will understand that I didn't have any problem because I pay little attention to my social media. Little to none. <laughs> but at the same time, what was really hard for me was the fact that we didn't have any GPS. How it worked was we would find a cafe or a bar or restaurant with Wi-Fi. We would go there, buy something, turn the Wi-Fi on, load the GPS uh, route and then we would turn the Wi-Fi off and go. But at the same time, look at the positive side of things. In the end, it was a good experience anyway, because yeah. we get to know people, get to know more places that probably wouldn't be going there because they were not our thing. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, it was just a good experience anyway. Yeah, wouldn't change a thing. Absolutely. It, it made it perfect that way, special yeah. in a way, I'd say. Yeah, I think it was just the panic of, you know, how do we get home? without internet um, but in the end we always we managed. managed yeah yeah um, and Bruno also talked earlier about the weather so there would be a storm pretty much the whole week um, and we were a bit sad because we were thinking well we chose Montenegro because we wanted a summer holiday to run away from the London weather and then <laughs> <laughs> a storm happening there yeah. um, but to be fair when we arrived there there was supposed, supposedly a storm mm -hmm. and it was like, what, 30 degrees and it was extremely warm. 30, that felt like 40. Mm. Yeah. While it was raining, you would see people <clears throat> wearing flip-flops, shorts and like a vest and an umbrella. So <laughs> yeah. they know it's raining now, but it's going to be summer in five minutes. Just like in London. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> four seasons in one day. Yeah. No, but what happens there is because they are in like in a different location, you know, within the mountains, I would say. Um, so the weather kind of changed like a lot, like really yeah. quickly. It's so unpredictable. Yeah. So if you have a storm, it will probably escalate really quickly. And, and then it's, it's like a yeah. real storm, like a tropical storm. We felt like we were in Cyprus because you had thunderstorms and loads of heavy rain and then hail and then sun. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite funny because every time it was raining, it was exactly on the days that we planned to stay at home longer in the morning so we could sleep and rest a little bit more and work in some content. And I don't know what else is important for us to tell them. Another, th another thing that is quite... First of all, just a break. Can you tell who likes to talk? Um, well, and I'm quite nervous, so imagine if I'm Carry not on. nervous. Carry on, it's all yours, it's all yours. <laughs> no, I think one, one important thing about Montenegro is that actually I feel that Montenegro is quite a complete destination in the sense that if you like a summer vibe, if you like to go to the beach or the swimming pool or something like that, Montenegro is your place. In another hand, if you like to go to the mountains to do hiking, to explore the natural parks and things like that, Montenegro also, is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want cultural sites and cultural landmarks as well, Montenegro is the answer. So I think in any scenario, Montenegro would be a perfect location for holidays. It's really interesting. It's a beautiful country. Every time we would go out, we would be Whoa. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and it was quite funny actually because we were always saying, oh yeah, you can put the, the camera in the backpack now. We are fed up, we are tired, we yeah, are recording. This is our first trip as our parallel universe. So we were trying to find out the balance between creating content and yeah, sort of enjoying the trip. So we would produce content and say, okay, we're done, let's enjoy it. And we put, put it away. And we would be like, this is so yeah, but then like two minutes after in the car, we were like, yeah, take it out because this is amazing. And then two hours later, okay, that's it now. <laughs> I would put it away. Ah, I just need to photograph that and I would take it out again. So yeah, this happened till the end of the trip. 
Absolutely. So I think in any case, if you don't know where to go in your next holidays, please consider Montenegro because I'm pretty sure you will find something that you like and you will have an amazing time over there. We sort of struggled a bit because their cuisine is more of a, I don't know, has got a, a huge Italian influence. So we struggled to find vegan food. Yeah. Vegetarian. Well, some pizzas and some, and some pastas, but it was not easy at all. Vegan food, we found one restaurant in Kotor Old Town. Yeah, that, that has it. Itself. Just a few dishes. And it was mainly pasta anyway, or yeah. pizza, which for us is okay because we really enjoy that. And the food was amazing. Yeah. But if you're strictly vegan, you won't be able to eat. Those who know me, they know I don't enjoy eating. I eat to survive. So for me, it's absolutely pointless to spend money on food. So it was hard for me to go to a restaurant and pay like 50 euros for a meal for both of us. That's a lot. With 50 euros, we could have gone on a trip and have done something else. No, absolutely. So we hope you've enjoyed this. Oh, hold on. There's one more thing that I think is quite important for you to be aware of. Always have some cash with you because even though card payments are widely approved and you can use your card anywhere, there are always some places where you will need to pay in cash either because they don't have any card machines or sometimes like the network doesn't work <laughs> so the card machines are not functioning especially if you go to a destination in the mountain or an attraction in the mountains the signal is really bad so and it happened during the thunderstorm the electricity went off yeah and Hui had gone to the grocery shop to buy some things for us to eat and he was about to pay and everything went off so the lady was like have you got any cash with you no so he left everything there because there was no other way and, and the lady was okay with it. So I'm assuming yeah. they're quite used to it. That's why we're advising you to, to have money. Yeah, but always have some cash with you. I mean, not a huge amount, obviously, but always something that if you need um, in any circumstance, then you can always, you know, have, be safe and buy whatever you need. Indeed. Thank that's... you ever so much for being here with us. Yeah, thank you. I'll be on this side of the camera more often now. <laughs> more often? Every single time. Well, I can't promise that because I'm an extremely busy person. Uh, wow. <laughs> no, I'll try to be on this side of the camera a bit more often from now on. Yeah, thank you so much for being on that side. Thank you so much for all your support in our Instagram account. We're giving blood, sweat and tears. We're giving everything Absolutely. we have because it's a huge dream. We're going to make it real. If you're watching this and you know us, you know you we're going to make it happen. So there's yeah. no other chance. There's no other way. So yeah, thank you so much. Please make sure you follow us there, you subscribe to this channel and make sure you stay on that side because there's loads more to come. Yeah, and bear in mind, this is my first video ever. So bear with me. <laughs> he's gonna take over and i yeah. He's just trying to find his place here on YouTube. And <laughs> he's gonna be recording videos by himself in a few no way. days. But anyway, it was really nice to be here. I was quite excited. Great. So thank you and I'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.